Hi, I'd just like to give you a quick demo of Credo's uh, atomic swap functionality. Um, so I'm logged in as this user here called Alice and we can see her mobile phone on the left. I have a fund here that has two assets in it, Bitcoin testnet, Ethereum testnet. I've got a little bit of each. Um, but what I'd like to do is swap some Bitcoin testnet for Ethereum. So I'm selecting this wallet that we've got uh, nearly 0.07 testnet Bitcoins in. Hit the new transaction button and I'm going to choose Atomic Swap, hit Continue. Now this, um, the Cell Wallet is already selected because that's where I was just browsing to in my Holdings page. And I need to choose a wallet that will accept the incoming um, Ethereum. And I'm going to use this one here, Testnet Ethereum. So I'd like to sell 0 0.01 Bitcoin. And for that, I'd like to receive point, uh, 0.35 Ethereum testnet, which is roughly the, the market exchange rate. Now, in a future release, we'll have a price oracle feed in here, so you can pick up an exchange rate that is, is fairly current. Um, we do charge it a small fee on both sides of the swap. It's 0.1 basis points uh, on the asset that you're sending, and we can see that's been calculated here. And I need to add a reference. Now, I'm just going to put my name in here, Alice Swap. 400 we'll see why that's important shortly and i'm going to choose an expiry period this is the time in which the custodians have um, on both alice's side and on the take of the swap to either approve or reject the transaction so i'm going to set this to be eight hours so i'm going to review the quote it just feeds back everything i've entered here including an exchange rate and all the details and if i'm happy with that i'm going to initiate it now, that's popped up on the phone. So if you're familiar with Credo, when you make a transaction, it's uh, essentially a two-step process. The first step is for the initiator of the transaction, the person that kicks it off in the browser, to prove it on their phone. And this is just to stop the scenario where Alice has gone for lunch, left her laptop open, someone tries to make an unauthorized transaction. Well, they can't because they need her phone. And as we shall see, they'll need her biometric, her thumb, thumb, thumbprint and a pin. So on the phone, I can see all the details of that swap quote, the amounts we're sending and asking for, the fees, the expiry time, the fund and the wallet it's coming from. And if I'm happy with that, I'm going to authorize that. So now it's asking for my touch ID, which is my, my thumbprint. This is unlocking the signing key that's going to sign this request, send it back to Credo. There's also this online authentication protocol as an additional uh, authentication layer. I need to enter this PIN and then confirm. And we see in Alice's browser that's now updated. So just to sort of review what's happened, at the bottom we get a history of the transaction. So firstly, it was initiated by Alice in the browser. Secondly, it was authorized by Alice on the phone. And now it's waiting for her custodian approval. Now we can see on this fund, she's got three custodians, these three people here, and a threshold of one of three. So before I do that, what I want to do is show you the two ways that you can share this quote. So the first way is simply by this URL. This uniquely represents a swap quote. And if you know uh, one of your colleagues or your counterparties might be, might be interested in taking this, you can just send that URL to them. They open it in the Credo web app and they can see the quote and, and accept it. Or you can share it to the Credo Liquidity Hub, which is effectively just a simple bulletin board that everyone on the Credo network can access. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll hit the Share to Liquidity Hub button. Now, it won't actually appear on the Liquidity Hub until Alice's custodians have approved it. So that's going to be the next step. So if you recall, we need one of these three people to approve it. Now, what I'm going to do off screen um, is to approve one of these. I'm actually going to approve as Eve. And there we can see we've got a tick next to Eve's name. She's the custodian that's approved it. And that has now met the one of three threshold. And now it's waiting for counterparty approval. That is the entity, the taker of the swap. So what's happened now is that's been published to the Credo Liquidity Hub. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip to a different user in a different browser. This is Bob. And if we go to the Liquidity Hub, we can see there's just a single entry on there. And that's the quote that Alice has just made. 
Now, if you recall, I put in a reference there using, uh, I think I called it Alice Swap 400. But as Bob, if I look at the details of that quote, I do not see that reference. There's no way that I know this is from Alice. It's truly anonymous. So I can see all the details here as Bob, the uh, sell and the buy price, the exchange rate, the fees, etc. Uh, and how long I've got to accept this. So if I want to accept it, I'm going to take this atomic swap quote. Um, what I need to do is choose a wallet that has enough, enough ETH in it to, to meet the 0.35 that Alice is asking for. And I also need to select a Bitcoin wallet into which Alice's Bitcoin will be sent when the swap is executed. We can also see the 0.1 basis point fee on the ETH that I am sending. And I'm going to put in a reference of Bob Swap 400. And then I can review the quote. Now, this now operates very similar to when Alice was making it. It's effectively the same. Bob is now taking this and executing a transaction on the reverse side of the, the swap. So what I'm going to do before I just take the atomic swap, I am going to bring Bob's phone onto screen. So here we go. And then if I take this, it happens in exactly the same way as when Alice was making the quote. We get the details on the phone. And as Bob, I can see all that information. I see his reference, Bob Swap 400. I don't see Alice's. I don't know who it's come from. And if I'm happy with that, which I am, I'm going to authorize it with the same pattern of biometric um, PIN. And then it will go to Bob's custodians. And we'll see that updated here. So uh, approved in the browser by Bob and um, accepted. Sorry, approved by Alice, accepted by Bob, authorized by Bob. And now it's hit Bob's custodians. Now, just for demo purposes, these just happen to be the same three people as Alice's custodians. But typically they would be a different group of people, possibly with a different threshold. But in this case, again, it's just one of three. So this time again, off screen, I am going to authorize using uh, Diana's account. Now, you see a little blue pop up now. That's just telling me that Liquidity Hub is updated and specifically when we go back to here, it's just simply that quote has been removed from the liquidity hub because it's been uh, completed and executed. We know that because this has all gone green from Bob's perspective. We can see that it was Diana that made the one of three threshold for the custodians. So if I close that down, just refresh the liquidity hub, that quote will go. And just to prove that that transaction has happened, I can go to the ledger view. Now the ledger view is, um, uh, aggregate of all transactions both outbound so we can see here we've got 0.35 ETH going out using Bob's reference and on the inbound side we see 0 0.01 Bitcoin coming in again using Bob's reference because we don't know this is from Alice and just finally to point out that swap happened on the Credo chain uh, it's practically instantaneous and um, the great thing about swaps is from Credo's perspective it's a single transaction on our blockchain so that means that it either happens in both directions or it doesn't happen at all. There's no way that one swap of that uh, one side of that swap could go through without the other side. Thank you.